Howdy folks, welcome back to another Armored Warfare replay. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today I have for you PV Operation Hardcore. This is Harbinger. Now today I'm going to focus on talking about the Striker ADATs, which is what I have. I'm actually going to focus on talking about the ADATs turret, as I've already talked about the Striker in a previous video. And if you're curious or would like to go back and recap the Striker, um... I will post a link in the video description. Now we'll take a quick look here at the Striker ADATs. And I actually have one of the German camos on this vehicle that is currently in the loot store. Pretty nice little camo pack. Um, I use the camo quite a few times on multiple vehicles in multiple settings. I just like the historic camos. I'm glad they're introducing them. I would like it if they would actually introduce some in the game that you can purchase for gold or uh, or even earn through battle paths, but hey, we can't have everything yet. So alright, let's talk about the ADATS turret here. I guess actually I'll let the mission lady roll through her whatever she has to say first. The and the fact that right now I kind of shit and didn't realize I was actually texting. I didn't see my chat box being open at the time. Heads up, Black Company. Enemy intel and recon trucks are in the area. It's a bit out of your way, but if you can take them out, they'll lose their eyes and ears in this battle. So let's begin talking about the turret, shall we? The Air Defense Anti-Tank System, or ADATS for short, is a dual-purpose, short-range, surface-to-air, and anti-tank missile system. It was a development as a private venture by Orlikon Contraves. This is a Swiss company and is a member of Rheinmetall Defense Group of Germany. They worked on and designed the launcher, radar, and control systems. While American Martin Martiria Martiria okay Martia Corporation would supply the missiles. The ADATS is a laser guided Enemy missile destroyed. system that can reach supersonic speeds and has a range of 10 kilometers. That is 6.2 miles for my American audience. The ADATS missiles has electrical or electro optical sensor with TV and forward looking infrared. Clear for short. The turret is mounted on a vehicle as well as a radar. The radar has an effective search range of 25 km kilometers. That's 15.5 miles once again for my American audience. They dats entered service with the Canadian Army in 1989, mounted on an M113 chassis. Later in 2005, Canada would mount the ADAT system on the LAV3 chassis. This was the multi mission effects vehicle, MMEV for short. It was an upgrade program, but in July of 2006, the Canadian Forces Land Staff recommended cancellation of the MMEV program, and the program would be cancelled later in November of 2006. The U.S. Army would also evaluate the ADATS turret for the Forward Area Air Defense, or FAD, competition. The program was under the designation MIM-146 for the missile, more or less named after the missile. The program was planned to mount the ADAT system on an M2 Bradley chassis. However, the program would be canceled in the early 90s after the end of the Cold War. So there you go. That's really all there is about the ADAT system. I'm going to talk primarily on the vehicle here. Now, Taiwan. And Greece also looked at possibly using the ADATS turrets. However, that just never came to fruition. So what you have here in Armored Warfare is a Striker chassis mounting the ADATS turret. 
it is actually pretty good. It is chock full of firepower. Seeing the fact that it's got eight, sorry, six guided missiles, and then it's got a total of 14 rockets between two seven shot rocket pods. It is tier nine, so it is a really good money maker. And its damage output is absolutely incredible. Um, with the satellite down, the camo is not bad. With the satellite up, though, you lose quite a bit of camo, but you gain the benefit of additional spotting, especially when trying to spot through camo. Other than that, not too much else can be said. Now, one thing I do want to point out, um, this does not have a hard kill APS, although there is some upgrades, and I can't recall if a hard kill APS was one of the said upgrades. Also, where with the other strikers, the smoke launchers are actually mounted on the turrets, in the case of the tow, and the anti-tank gun, which I'm actually getting ready to park next to here, they are actually mounted on the front of the hall. <clears throat> I actually believe they were going for more of the feel of the Lab 3 over the actual striker. Because, well, we're Americans and we like to have our smoke launchers on turrets. Now we're just kind of chilling here. Getting ready to unleash some firepower. And that's what this thing has. This, this thing is made to turn freedom up to 11. Besides the freedom, as you can see, we got a full group of American vehicles. Here we go, we got some spots here. Here we go, we're going to launch on this Merkava quick. Pop some smoke. And then I'm going to switch off to the rocket pods. I'm going to start unloading those. Now I'm not really sure if these are penning. I'm actually hoping they are because they actually can pen the Merkava, as you can see. Some of them did penetrate. I would not count on all of them actually penetrating. Now I'm loading up the wire guided, well, the, the guided missiles here. And there's one, two, and destroyed. And destroyed. And that's what this vehicle does. Now the larger guided missiles is really good for taking out heavier targets, although they're pretty good for light targets as well, as they're more or less a, a shaped charged missile. And then you have the rockets, which are also considered as a heat round. And the rockets are really good for taking out lightweight vehicles or even heavier vehicles if you have the rear as they will penetrate the rear of most vehicles. Now here I just used my ammunition kit to replenish my larger guided missiles. The thing is with this vehicle is it doesn't have a ton of ammo. So I actually have Alyssa, which is, she's the commander from the, um, from the Warlords of the Wasteland Battle Path. So I can carry extra ammo. Here we go. There we go. Side of a Type 99 destroyed by rocket pods. Now we're loading the guided missiles. If I can get a good guidance lock here and not be a turd. Good lord, that, that volley of missiles sucked. And we'll put that in the area. Switch into the rocket pods. And unleashing hell that one now we're going to take out this terminator and there's that one so as you can see here it's nothing special it's a very rudimentary uh tank destroyer based replay where i'm not so worried about spotting i'm actually just worried about trying to not be spotted trying to sit back at a range and just devastate and that is the W. And I'm going to show you the results here. 
and you can see the devastation of 42,121 damage with 20 enemy vehicles destroyed. Now, I do want to say this is not the first time uh, I actually got a very similar gameplay like this. The first game I played in this, I think I had like 25, somewhere between 25 and 27,000 damage. And I also had a Destroyer Medal as well that game and a Blue Star. My third match was was i was going to use as a replay was around thirty-five thousand damage and once again destroyer and blue star and then i got this replay as you can see forty-two thousand damage and destroyer and blue star and that's what this vehicle does at tier nine it unleashes pure hell but uh so i would be way over my team overall for damage and uh yeah so there you go that you can see the results um now the way you can get this tier 9 premium vehicle is actually through the uh the current american dream contracts i would say if you play a lot of pve this would definitely be a worthwhile vehicle because it is an absolutely devastating monster um for pvp I would say it's going to be very situational. I would say it can be pretty damn devastating. But I would say where it's going to be the most devastating is the way you saw it played here today. But anyway, folks, thank you very much for checking out this Armored Warfare replay. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again for the next video. And uh, yeah, thank you very much again for watching.